Company, the makers of Lux Telescope, brings you the Lux Radio Theater, starring Merle Oberon and Cameron Mitchell in Wuthering Heights. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Irving Cummings. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight not only begins the 21st year of the Lux Radio Theater on the air, but we will present the first of our 20 great motion pictures of the past 20 years. Our opening masterpiece is Mr. Samuel Goldwyn's tempestuous drama, Wuthering Heights, one of the world's great love stories. And as our star, we have beautiful and talented Merle Oberon, recreating her original role, and one of the fastest rising young stars in Hollywood, Cameron Mitchell. Following our play, we will pay tribute to our special guest, Mr. Samuel Goldwyn, who will tell us about his latest production, Guys and Dolls. Now, Act One of Wuthering Heights, starring Merle Oberon as Kathy and Cameron Mitchell as Heathcliff. <laughs> Desolate and lonely are the rolling moorlands of England, where in the winter night the snowdrifts loom like giant specters in the teeth of screaming gales. About 100 years ago, a stranger lost his way on such a night, freezing, blinded, and stumbling. He saw at last the fitful lights of an old manor house, aged and trembling on the hillside. He knocked desperately at the door. It was opened by a doddering old butler, who stood staring at him. Then, without a word, he led the stranger into the musty living room, where in the dim candlelight, a man and two women sat without moving. The man was tall and dark-skinned, like a gypsy. On his face, the stamp of years of bitter suffering. At last, the man turned and spoke. Who are you? What do you want? My, my name's Lockwood. I, I've lost my way on the moors. Strangers have no business on the moors at this time of year. And no business here at any time. But I, I couldn't find a village. A man could die out there on a night like this. I'm afraid I'll have to stay until morning. Do as you please. Beg your pardon? I don't keep accommodation. Yes, yes. You can't. He's our guest. Oh. Then suppose you attend to his comfort. Helen? Tell the gentleman to the guest room, please. The guest room, mister? Yes, there's no other place. Why, yes, mister. This way, sir. Huh? Now, you hold the ladder, sir, so while I unlock the door. Oh, of course. Mind you don't stumble on the carpet. Ah, uh, you call this the, um, guest chamber? It was once. Hmm. It's a trifle depressing. No light of fire. No fire will burn in that grate, sir. The chimney's been clogged for years. Hmm. Must have been a fine old house then. What's it called? This is Wuthering Heights, sir. And the tall chap downstairs with the piercing eyes. That'll be Master Heathcliff, sir. And the once lovely lady who looks at him with fear? That's his wife, Mistress Isabella. Well, good night, sir. If you want anything, there's the bell rope. My name is Ellen. Well, thank you, Ellen. Good night. Mr. Earnshaw returned from Liverpool with a fumbling boy he had picked up. 
a dark, savage-looking Egyptian man with the most dreadful marks of beatings on his back. Mr. Earnshaw called for me the moment he arrived. Give him a good scrubbing, Ellen, and put some of Hindley's clothes on him. Yes, sir. Come with me, lad. Don't touch me. Let me alone. Couldn't you? Now, 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 son. Ellen won't hurt you. You're safe here. No one will ever beat you again, and you'll always have plenty to eat. Father? Well, Hindley, Kathy? Papa? Who's that boy? Yes, who is he, Father? Uh, children, this little guest will pay us a visit for a time, as, as long as he wants a home here. He's dirty. Look at him. Kathy, don't make me ashamed of you. Uh, Hindley, he will sleep in your room. In my room? I won't let him. He's a dirty gift. That will do, Hindley. Take charge of the lad, Ellen. And what will his name be, Mr. Renato? Uh, his name? Uh... I think we shall call him Heathcliff. Yes, sir. Come, Heathcliff. That dark, brooding boy who never before had known kindness brought a subtle change to life at Wuthering Heights. The three children seemed to play well enough together, going stamping off over the moor on their ponies and climbing the crags together. But neither Kathy nor Hindley were open and frank anymore. And one day the children fought openly. Give me this pony, it's mine. Give me that pony, do you hear? Or I'll tell Father you both should be turn us off when he died. That's a lie, I never said it. Of course he didn't. He did. He cheat, he'll cheat us out of everything. You never had a father, you gypsy beggar, and you'll never get mine. Hindley, don't hit him now, don't, don't. He'll trickle down the other stone. Oh, there, fancy that'll teach you. Hindley, he's bleeding. Serves him right, gypsy stump. Are you hurt? He hit me with that stone. He said, why don't you ever cry when you're hurt? Like other people. Why should I cry? I'll pay him back someday. I don't care how long I wait if I can only pay him back. He said, don't say those things. Come, he said. Now, when he's gone, we can have our game at the castle again. I don't feel like playing at the castle. Please. <laughs> you always smile and laugh when we're there. Come on, he said. Don't sound so heathcliff. Sit here beside me. This is our castle. Castle. It's this Pennestone Crag, and you know it. This is your castle, and you're prince in disguise. Tell me about it again. Well, it's all true. Cross my heart. Your father was Emperor of China, and your mother, Queen of India. You were kidnapped by wicked sailors and brought to England. Don't make fun of me, Kathy. I'm not making fun of you. You're a really and truly prince. And I'm your slave. No. You're my queen, Kathy. And you'll always be my queen. You hear? Yes, Miss Kiss. Your queen. And that's the way they grew up, wild and free, roaming the moors together. But he grew more and more jealous. Kathy was 18 and he was past 21 when Mr. Earnshaw died. Good man. He never saw the evil of life and he raised his kiss like his own son. But on the very day of his funeral... You're not going into that room to look at my father's body? Why? He loves me more than you. He's past your wheedling now. I'm master of Wuthering Heights. If you want to stay here, we've need for a stable boy. A stable boy? That or get out. And that's what he became. Heathcliff, who had lived under this roof as one of the family, was a stable Well, give me a hand up to my saddle. Very well. Sir, you gypsy beggar. How many times must I tell you? Sir, uh, that's better. By the time I come back in the morning, I want these stable scrubs. Scrubs, you understand? If you're not, I'll thrash you to my arm drop. Heathcliff. Heathcliff. Yes, Kathy. Oh, Heathcliff, I heard him. How much longer are you going to stand this? I don't know what you mean. Look at you. Dirty and unkempt and in rags. Why aren't you a man? Why don't you run away? Run away? From you? You could come back weeks and take me away. Why aren't you a prince like we said long ago? Why don't you rescue me, Heathcliff? Kathy. Kathy, come away with me now. Now? Where? Anywhere. You mean leave as we are? You live in haystacks? Steal our food? Oh, no, Heathcliff. That isn't what I want. Well, you just want me to go off alone. Oh, no, Kathy, no. 
that I won't do. I've stayed here since your father's death. I've been beaten and cursed like a dog, abused and driven mad. Just so I could be near you. And like a dog, I'll stay to the end. Yet he slipped his life. Your guilt was too much even for his great love, and he disappeared. Cassie found the new world in her first introduction at Lincoln Manor with Edgar Linton and his sister Isabella, both Cassie's in. Music and laughter were there, and it was escape from Wuthering Heights. Edgar Linton fell madly in love with Cassie. They were constantly together. Then one evening, Edgar brought Cassie home in a pony cart. As quickly as I could, I tried to warn her. My hand down from the cart, Miss Cassie. Thank you, Edgar. Oh, Ellen, we had the most marvelous time. Cassie, come here. Excuse me, Edgar. Something wrong, Ellen? He's close back. Mister, when did he come back? Last night. He talked so strange and here he is now. Hello, Cassie. Oh, Mister. You said you'd stay away until... Why were you gone so long? I didn't expect to find you here. Why were you gone so long? Why? Because I've met the Lindsay's and stayed at their house. Because I've learned to dance. And because I've had a wonderful, delightful, fascinating time. Are you the stable boy? Would you mind putting my horse up for an hour? Yes, and you might wash your hands and comb your hair, he said. So I needn't be ashamed of you before a guest. And look after Mr. Linton's horse. Let him look after his own horse. Pleasant fellow. How can your brother allow such a beast of a gypsy stable boy to act like this? Beast of a gypsy stable boy? Well, of course, a roadside beggar giving himself airs of equality. And what do you know about Heathcliff? He doesn't even miss performance. All I need to know. He was my friend long before you. That blackguard? Blackguard and all he belongs under our roof. And you speak well of him or get out. Cassie, I wanted your sense. Get out, I said, or stop calling those I love names. Those you love? That stable boy? Yes. Kelly, do you realize what you're saying? I'm saying I hate you. I hate the look of your milk white face. I hate the touch of your soft, foolish hands. Some of that gypsy's evil soul has gotten into you, I think. Yes. Some of that beggar's dirt is on you. Yes, yes. Now get up. Get up. Get it. Get it, please. Come back. Miss Cassie. Helen, where is he? Where is he? He's gone across the moors toward Pennystone Crag. He's there. Ready when your Mr. Linton gets here. Oh, any young man who'll come sniveling back after the way you treated him. <laughs> but I sent my apologies to him, didn't I? Of course he'll come. Oh, Kathy, I can't believe this change in you. Just yesterday it seemed you were a stupid, harum scarum child with dirty hands and a willful heart. <laughs> That's my other nature, Ellen. I still have it. It used to fly around wild, but now I can coax it into a cage whenever I want to. Heathcliff. <laughs> When are you in the habit of entering my room? Get out, Helen. I will not. I take orders from you. Get out. Well, now that we're so happily alone, may I know to what I owe this great honor? He's coming here again. Who? That, that stupid fox, Linton. You're unbearable. Utterly unbearable. Why are you dressed in silk? Because gentle folk dress for dinner. Why are you trying to win his puling flattery? I'm not a child anymore. You can't talk to me that way. I'm not talking to a child. I'm talking to Cassie. My Cassie. I'm your Cassie. Yes, you are. And I'm to take orders from you, a dirty stable girl. Cassie, Cassie, where's your heart? You had your chance to be something else. You left here once. Why didn't you stay away? Now let me alone. That's right. That's 
That's right. The dirty stable boy can't come near you lest he soil your dress. But who soils your heart, Cassie? Who turns you into a cheap, vain, ambitious fool? Linton does. You let yourself be loved by him because it pleases your stupid, greedy vanity. Stop it. Thief or beggar is all you were born to be. Kneeling beside the road, begging for favors. Not earning them, but whimpering for them with your dirty hands. No. All I am to you now is a pair of dirty hands. Well, have them then. Have them where they belong. No, Kathy. It doesn't help to strike you. Well, Heathcliff, I'll thank you to stay out of my kitchen. Is Kathy still with him? Yes, she is. What's the matter with you? What are you staring at? Oh, Ellen. Ellen, I want to crawl to her feet, beg to be forgiven for loving her, for needing her more than my own life. I don't care, Ellen. I don't care if she loves Linton or whom she loves. If she'll only look at me and say my name. Oh, Heathcliff. Ellen! Ellen! She's coming now. Get out here. I'll wait outside the door. No, you can't. I want to be where I can see her. Here. Heathcliff! Ellen, where are you? There you are. Yes, Miss Cathy. Has uh, uh, Mr. Linton gone? He just left. Oh, Ellen, I've some wonderful news for you. Edgar has asked me to marry him. And what did you say? I'm to give him my answer tomorrow. Cathy, do you love him? Of course. Why? Well, that's a silly question. Because he's handsome and pleasant to be with. Not enough. Well, then, because he'll be rich someday. And I'll be the finest lady in the county. Oh, Ellen. It would be heaven to escape from here. What about you? He's cliff. He's cliff. He gets worse every day. It would degrade me to marry him. I wish he'd never come back. What is that? I think. Nothing would win, perhaps. Well, my darling. If Master Rector in his beautiful home means heaven to you, you'd better enter that heaven and take your place among the Linden angels. The only thing is, I wonder if I belong in heaven. I dreamed once I was there, and I broke my heart with weeping to come back to earth, to the deep moors. The angels were so angry they flung me back, and I awoke on top of Wuthering Heights, sobbing with joy. So, Evan, I suppose I've really no more business marrying Edgar Linton than I have of being in heaven. But, Ellen, Ellen, what can I do? You're thinking of it, Who else? He seems to take pleasure in being mean and brutal. And yet, he's more myself than I am. Whatever our souls are made of, his and mine are the same. The little happiness he's known, I've known too. If everything else in the world died and only his kiss remained, life would still be full for me. Ellen, I am his kiss. Heathcliff's taken Master Hindley's best horse. He's gone. Gone? Ellen. Ellen, did he hear what I said? Yes, Miss Cat. How much did he hear? I'm not sure. But I think to where you said it would degrade you to marry him. Oh. No. Heathcliff! Heathcliff! Come back! Come back, Heathcliff! century ago, a traveler Lockwood sat in the musty guest room at Wuthering Heights, listening to the story told him by the old servant, Ellen. The night that he went away, ran far across the woods after him in the bitter cold, calling his name into the wind. Hours later in the morning, Edgar Linton found her, half frozen in her silken party dress. For weeks after she was ill, the Lintons took her to their manor house, and I was glad, day by day, the strange influence that Heathcliff had had upon Kathy wore off, and she was happy with Edgar. Why can't you remain here forever, Kathy? Oh, Edgar, you and your sister, you've been too kind to me already. If I can make you happy by just being kind, that should be enough for me. 
After all, what else can I give you? What else? You've given me a great deal else, Victor. You've given me your own self, your strength. My strength? You'd understand if you really knew what my life was before. It was like the moors, endless and desolate. And I was lost in time, calling for someone in the darkness to save me. I was so frightened, so terribly alone. Then suddenly, you were there. You held out your hand and led me back to a way of living I really never knew before. What you said long ago is true. There was a curse on me, Edgar, that kept me from being myself. Or at least from what I wanted to be. It kept me from living in heaven. There, Edgar, do you understand now? Cassie, my darling, let me take care of you, love you, always. Would you? Would you love me always? Always, Cassie. Then let's be married, Edgar. Oh, quickly, quickly. It's the Lincoln home has seen heaven to me before. I don't know what to call it after she became a mistress. The only one who did not seem completely happy was Edgar's sister, Isabella. A year or two after the marriage, the three of them sat in the drawing room, Edgar reading Isabella and Cassie quietly doing the petty point. When the door knocker sounded, when I saw who it was, I went back into the drawing room. Yes, Ellen? What's the matter? It's just Cassie. Heathcliff has come back. <laughs> Tell him I'm not at home, Ellen. Not at home? Darling, to whom? It, it's Heathcliff. Heathcliff? Uh-huh. Does he seem the same, Ellen? No, sir. I hardly recognize him. Fine clothes. He seems quite the same. Don't prattle, Ellen. I said I didn't wish to see him. Oh, nonsense, Kathy. It's been a long time. Bygones must be bygones. Yes, let us see some kind of caller. Show him in, Ellen. Edgar, this is a mistake. Cassie, your hands are trembling. Are they? The past is dead, my dear. Don't hesitate to smile and be nice to him because I'll understand it's my wife who loves me who smiles. Thank you, Edgar. You always understand, Mr. Heathcliff. Come in. Hello, Cassie. How are you, Heathcliff? Uh, have you met my sister, Isabella? Oh, how do you do, Miss Lynn? We are glad to see a guest, sir. Thank you. Well, he said, I must say, I've never seen such a complete change in a man. You seem to have prospered. Yes, I have. You must have found at least a gold mine. No. I merely remembered that my father was emperor of China and my mother a queen of India. <clears throat> You're staying long in the neighborhood? I'm staying the rest of my life. Really? I have just bought the horses, the cattle, and the moors belonging to the estate known as Wuthering Heights. No. You mean Cathy's brother Hindley sold out? Yes, but he doesn't know it yet. I imagine it will be a shock when Hindley discovers his gambling and liquor debts were paid up for him by by his former stable boy. Heathcliff, you can't have done that. That's as underhanded a piece of work as ever I heard of. If I'd known Hindley was in such financial straits that his holdings were being stolen by a stranger... May I remind you, Mr. Edgar Linton, that I am not a stranger. I am merely a neighbor. Now I'll say goodnight. Wait, Heathcliff. Well... I want you to know that we sometimes have friends who come here, Edgar, Edgar and I. And you're welcome to come, too. But not with the old scowl on your face. Or that old bitterness in your heart. Thank you, my dear friend, Cathy, for the warning. Oh, I, I just remembered. I forgot to congratulate you on your, your marriage. May I now express my delight. Good night. Edgar, I think you behaved abominably. What? And you too, Cassie. What in thunder do you mean? Well, you could at least have been civil. You dismissed him as if he'd been a servant. Do you consider him anything else? I find he's grown fascinating and distinguished. Really, Isabella? I hope I misunderstand. Well, you don't. We see all too few people. And I, for one, start to be rude. If he ever calls again. <clears throat> Edgar, I... I greatly dread what the future will bring. No nonsense, darling. I tell you... The past is dead. That's all, Joseph. I'll occupy the master bed. Yes, sir. You'll stay on, of course. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, shall I pack Master Hindley's things? No. Just move them out of the master's bedroom. He'll remain under this roof. Master Hindley, sir? Yes. He gave me a roof once when I needed it. Joseph, 
I take it he's drinking a great deal. Yes, sir. The Dr. Kenneth has ordered him not to. Give him all the drink he wants. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, a lady's waiting to see you, sir. A lady? Uh, from Lincoln Manor, sir. Well, why didn't you tell me? In the future, Dr. Announce visitors immediately. Oh, Miss Linton. Are you disappointed, sir? Not at all. I was passing by. My horse went lame. I see. I just want to tell you I'm serious with my brother and Kathy. They received you most shamefully last night. Your brother didn't send you with this apology. Oh, no. In fact, he's forbidden me to... To speak to me. Yes? And Kathy also forbade you. Yes. Then, in all the moorland, you're my only friend. I... I would like to be. Thank you. Miss Linton, I enjoy frankness. You didn't come here to apologize. Your horse can go lame. Why? You came because you're lonely. Because the house you live in is too happily wedded for an outsider. Because it's no joy to ride the moors alone. Is that right? Yes. Then, my dear, you needn't be lonely anymore. Oh. You think it's strange that I should kiss you? I I don't know. You hate it? No. Mm -hmm. I see you like frankness, too. The same strange power that Heathcliff had held over Kathy, he seemed to hold over Isabella, too. Against her brother's wishes, she came often to Wuthering Heights, and she was seen many times with Heathcliff riding across the moors. Then one night, there was a party at Linton Manor. Heathcliff had not been invited, but he came as Isabella's guest. But his looks were all for Kathy. Dark, brooding look until the guests grew uncomfortable and left before the evening had well begun. Later that night, Kathy went to Isabella's room. Isabella, may I come in? If you wish. Are you getting ready for bed? Yes. Oh, I can get a lovely dance tonight. May I speak to you for a moment? Well? Isabella, you behaved as gracefully tonight. In what way, may I ask? It was bad enough asking Heathcliff here without consulting or You had forbidden me. But to throw yourself at him the way you did. Well, you refused to dance with him. I had to dance every dance as a result. You fool. You vain little fool. Really, Kathy? I'm going to open your eyes. Isabella, don't you see he's using you? Don't you see he's using you to be near me, to smile at me behind your back? To try to rouse something in my heart that's dead? It's you who are vain and foolish, Kathy. Heathcliff is in love with me. Not a lie. It's not a lie. He told me so. He's kissed me. He's... Yes, kissed me. Held me in his arms. Told me he loves me. I'm going to your brother. Yes, go to Edgar. Tell him Heathcliff has asked me to marry him. And that I have said yes, you hear? Yes. You can't, Isabella. He's not a man. He's something horrible and dark to live with. I know why you say such things. Because you love him. You're mad with jealousy at the thought of my marrying him because you want him to pine for you, dream of you, die for you, while you're safe as the lovely Mrs. Edgar Linton. You want to hurt him, destroy him, but I want to make him happy. And I will. I will. Sit down, Kathy. I won't say I'm not surprised to see you. Does Edgar know? He wouldn't approve. Heathcliff, is it true? Is what true? Did you ask Isabella to marry you? Did you? <laughs> Heathcliff, you mustn't do this villainous really thing. She's never harmed you. No, Kathy. But you have harmed me. Then punish me. That's what I intend to do. How? Oh. Every moment I hold her in my arms, when I kiss her, when I promise her life and happiness, you will be punished. You'd marry her to do that? Yes. To teach you the ways of pain and the awful hell I'm in. Heathcliff, if there's anything human left in you, don't make me a partner to this crime. Kathy, if your heart were only stronger than your dull care for the world and its conventions, I'd live silent, content in your shadow, begging for an occasional word or thought, as I used to do. But no, no, Kathy, no. You had to destroy me with that weakness you call virtue. You had to keep me tormented with that cruelty you think so pious. How have I been cruel? You wished to be known as the finest lady in the county. You wanted your luxury and your light. At the same time, you wanted to keep me your despairing lover. Heathcliff, that's not true. Now that I am returned, had you given me the smile of love, 
I might have been content. So now, Kathy, you needn't think of me as your despairing and foolish lover. You can think of me as Isabella's husband and be glad for my happiness as I am for yours. house on Wuthering Heights a hundred years ago, the candle burns low in the dreary guest room. There is no sound but the wind outside and the hushed voice of the old maid servant as she tells her story. It was then that Isabella Lindsay came into this house as a bride. Yes, Heathcliff married her out of revenge, the same revenge that made him keep Henry here slowly drinking himself into the grave. Isabella learned the reason for her marriage to Heathcliff, but she was powerless to do anything. Then one day, Dr. Kenneth, an old friend, came to see her. He had come that morning from Lincoln Manor. I tell you, Isabella, go back where you belong, to Edgar's house. Edgar disowned me, Dr. Kenneth. I know, but he needs you now. Kathy is gravely ill. Really? Didn't you know? But it's a matter of days now, perhaps hours. She can't be dying. Yes. Fever. Inflammation of the lungs. This intense cold and something else. Something else? Yes. I'd call it the will to die. If Kathy dies, I might begin to live. Isabella. Begin to live. <laughs> In this house with Heathcliff. Nothing can live. No, Henry. Nothing but hate. So you think the about it. begin to live. When Kathy dies, you won't. Oh, Henry, what is it? This house, I can feel the hate within it like a crushing weight. Of course you can. And you. He hates you even more than he hates me. Stop it. He loathes you. Every time you kiss him, his heart breaks with rage that it's not Kathy. Think about it. Isabella, why don't you do what I've been too weak to do? Kill him. Don't talk to me. Get away. Kill him, kill him, while there's still time to save your immortal soul. <laughs> well, Henry, well, remarkable. <laughs> really, Henry, that's the first coherent speech I've heard from you in weeks. Please, please, Dad. I, I tried to stop oh, him. Thank you, my dear wife. Your loyalty is touching. Your curses will come home to feed on your own heart. <laughs> Every agony you've ever given will return. Last now, he slipped. There's no laughter in hell! Heathcliff, why do you have him here? My dear, existence would be so much less without my boyhood friend under my roof. Heathcliff, you poison yourself with paying him back. Send him away and love will come to this house. Kiss me, Heathcliff. Tell me you love me. Tell me, darling. Why? Why isn't there the smell of heather in your head? Let me come near you, please. I can let you have him, my darling. Let me, please. You'll never regret letting me try. I'll bring life to you. Life and sunshine and freshness. Put your arms around me. Look into my eyes. Your eyes are empty, like Lincoln's. They aren't empty. You look deeper. Look at me. I'm pretty. I'm a woman. Set your heart to me. Just one. Oh, you know you. God. God, why did you give me life? What is it but hunger and pain? Mrs. Isabella. Yes? What do you want here, Helen? I've come from Lincoln Manor to speak to Mrs. Isabella. Then you'll do so in front of me. Her brother is asking that she come home for a visit. Oh, so he's lost some of his pride, has he? Well, there's none gone in this house. Please, Mr. Isabella. He needs you. Needs her? What is this, Ellen? Why does he need her? Let go of me. Kathy's ill. Yes. She's dying. Kathy's dying. Yes. She was dying. You're, You're not going to keep uh, Yes, sir. Tell my horse. No. She belongs to Edgar. She belongs to me. If she's dying, let her die in his arms where she belongs. Let her die. Let her die. Now, who speaks of hate? Get out of my way. Eat it now. 
<laughs> and there was a murmur from the height, a faraway and wild, heartbroken moan. The wings of Lucifer beat on the night, the soul of Lucifer wept all alone. Shall I read some more, darling? No, Edgar. Will you open the window, please? Won't it be too cold? Please. Of course, my darling. Now I can smell the heather. And Edgar, isn't there a south wind? And isn't the snow almost gone? Yes, quite gone. Will you get me something? Anything you wish, my darling. Some heather. There's a beautiful patch near the castle. Will you get from there? What castle, Kathy? The castle on the moor, of course. Bring me some from there. You're in a fever, my dear. There's no castle on the moor. There is. There is. On the little hill beyond Wuthering Heights. You mean Tennyson Crane? Yes. Yes. Please go now. Why do you call it a castle? Because I was a queen there once. Will you bring me the heather, Edgar? If you rest while I'm gone and sleep. You're so kind. So good. <laughs> My darling. You made me the finest lady in the county. Such lovely clothes. I've always adored that velvet dress the most. Wasn't it a wonderful dress, that girl? Wonderful. When you wore it. Go now, please. Get me that. Ever. Sleep. My dear Kathy. I'll be back with the Heather you want. Not to be disturbed, sir. Master Edge has gone for the doctor. I love you. I love you. 
That's my murderer. Please, Jim. Carry me to the window. And you look at the moors with you once more. Oh, my darling. Just once more. Yes, I can't do it. Why don't you bring back Wuthering Heights? There are so many people who would like to see it. 
I expect to. Do bring it back, Sam. People are always asking me when they can see it again. And to see beautiful Mel Oberon in her lovely Lux complexion. <laughs> it is a Lux complexion, Irving. I was introduced to Lux when I first came here from England. And it's been my favorite toilet soap ever since. Well, now that we're on the subject of dolls, <laughs> when are you going to bring out guys and dolls? And come time oh. next year. I'm preparing it now and expect to start photographing early next year. Guys and Dolls is one of the biggest hits on Broadway of the past few seasons. The rights to film it must have cost a lot. I understand you paid over a million dollars for the picture rights. That's right, I did. No wonder you're so careful with the casting. (laughs) (laughs) You certainly made an excellent choice in casting Marlon Brando as Kai Masterson. Will Marlon sing and dance? He will. The first time musical, but Marlon can do anything for my money. And for mine. <laughs> I just finished making a picture with him, and he's wonderful. I'm also interested in the girls' roles. Don't you have anyone in mind for Miss Adelaide, Sam? I've made a decision, and I'm sure the public will be delighted at my choice. And for your information, she'll have a lovely luxe complexion. <laughs> How about the part of Nathan Detroit? That will have to remain a secret. For a while. Well, I know the picture will be done as only Sam Goldwyn can do it. In a way that has always set such a high standard for all Hollywood to follow. Yes. Now, thank you, Irving. Now, tell me, are you continuing with your high standard next week and presenting another great motion picture? Yes, Anne. It's one of Warner Brothers' finest pictures of last season. Edna Thurber's great novel, So Big. And as our stars, we will have one of the most accomplished artists in Hollywood. Ida Lupino, co-starring with one of our most handsome leading men, Robert Stack. That should be a wonderful show. Good night. Good night. It certainly will. Good night. Good night. And thanks for a great opening show. And best of luck to you, Sam. And guys and dogs. Twentieth Century Fox Studios, whose current release is the Cinemascope production, The Egyptian, and will soon be seen in Marvin Leroy's production, Strange Lady in Town. Heard in our cast tonight were Jeanette Nolan as Ellen, Joan Banks as Isabella, Whitfield Connor as Edgar Linton, Shepard Menken as Hindley, and Barry Curtis, Issa Ashdown, Christopher Cook, Leo Britt, Polly Bear, Ben Wright, Eric Snowden, and Eddie Marr. Our music was directed by Rudy Schrager. Lever Brothers.